along with us today as we adventure to Fort Clinch State Park. If you wouldn't mind taking a moment to like this video, leave me a comment letting me know what you think, share this video with someone else that you think might enjoy it, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button so you'll receive future notifications when I produce additional content. Any and all of that would be so helpful to my channel. It really just helps me to spread my content to others who might enjoy it. I truly enjoy making this content for you guys, and I ultimately just want to spread it around, and I want to share it with as many people as I can. And so when you do any one of those things, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, it really helps to push my content so that additional viewers can see it. Fort Clinch State Park is located in Fernandina Beach, which is the northernmost city on Florida's Atlantic coast. It is situated on Amelia Island. Fort Clinch State Park is a 1,400 acre park. It is known for its gopher tortoises, painted buntings, other species of wildlife, camping, fishing, shelling, and shark tooth hunting. The park is open from 8 a.m. to sunset 365 days a year. The fort is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. daily. There is a $6 per vehicle fee to get into the park, and there is a $2.50 charge for anyone over five to visit the fort. The entrance to the Cumberland Sound and the St. Mary's River has been of vital importance to the people of Florida for close to 300 years. The first fortifications on the site began in 1736, but it wasn't until almost a century later that Fort Clinch as we know it today began to take shape. Construction of Fort Clinch began in 1847. It was built mostly by civilians and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to protect the coast of southern Georgia. Our initial trip to the fort was quite brief. We forgot that the fort closes at 5 p.m. and we showed up just before 5 p.m. So we were able to enter and just take a very quick look around, but that was it for that evening. We had already paid $6 to get into the park, so we chose to go over to one of the beachy areas that they have within the park, and we looked for some shells and enjoyed the water. You'll see that in a few minutes in this video. But then later on, you will also see us return to the fort the next day and go into all the different buildings that they had open to the public. So you will get to see the fort in more detail. Just hang out for that. It's coming soon. This is a catchy way to remind people to not throw their trash out on the beach. It takes so long for some really everyday items to decompose, and some never do. As the name implies, Fernandina Beach has miles of coastline. It was really neat to see just how many different types of sand can be found on one island. of Fort Clinch State Park include three quarters of a mile of Atlantic shoreline and an additional two and a half miles along the St. Mary's Inlet and Amelia River. It is important to note that there are no lifeguards on duty. Shelling is a popular activity within the fort. People especially like to hunt for shark's teeth. It is also important to note that the shoreline near historic Fort Clinch, which is what you're viewing right now, is not meant for swimming, and that is due to dangerous currents and steep drop-offs associated with the inlet. 
However, this is a popular area for fishing, shark tooth hunting, and wildlife viewing. You're encouraged to bring some binoculars so that you might be able to catch a view of the wild horses on the shoreline of Cumberland Island National Seashore, which lies directly to the north. You can also fish in this area for redfish, flounder, spotted trout, and whiting. opportunity is present to see a variety of wildlife within the park. From dolphins to North Atlantic right whales and even possibly loggerhead leatherback and green sea turtles. The other area of the park that we visited on the original evening that we went was Egan's Creek Overlook. As the name implies, Egan's Creek Overlook is an overlook of Egan's Creek, a portion of it anyway. There are other ways to access Egan's Creek. This is a nice little view of the creek and it lets you see some of the different wildlife around the area if they happen to be present at that time, as well as hear the sounds. Overlook of the Creek is an absolutely beautiful area. If you'd like to visit the Creek and just the Creek, there are a couple of free ways to do so. Loading ourselves up to go to Fort Clinch today. 
It is our last full day here, so we are fitting in a little bit more fun. So let's go check out the fort. On our way to the fort, we made a stop at a local store called Bell's. We encountered this flock of geese and they were adamant that they were going to take their time doing what they pleased and not get out of the way of our vehicle. And in a moment, you're going to see that Brandon did a little bit of egging them on. Our purpose for stopping at Bell's was so Colin could get a new pair of shoes for going back to school time. A little treat from his Gigi. With the successful Bell's trip behind us, we headed back to the fort. After you pay the entrance fee, there's a little bit of a drive to get back to the actual fort as well as the coastlines that are part of the park. And this drive is just beautiful. I don't mind at all that it takes a little while because every minute of that drive just feels magical. I love the trees that overarch the roadway. It feels like we are driving into some kind of fairy tale. After the gorgeous drive in, you will be greeted by the visitor center, where you will pay your 250 admission to get into the fort, and where there are also several different little mementos and trinkets that you could choose to purchase to commemorate your trip. After you exit the visitor center, there is a museum that houses lots of historical facts and artifacts related to the fort. At the start of the Civil War, only about two thirds of the fort had been completed and cannons had yet to be mounted on the walls. The fort came by default under Confederate control. As the Union started to gain control of coastal and southern Georgia, General Robert E. Lee gave the order to evacuate and Union troops arrived in March of 1862. More work on the fort commenced thanks to Company E of the New York Volunteer Engineers, but it was still not completed by the end of the war and by 1869 was left empty. The fort was then maintained by the U.S. Army on caretaker status until 1898, when the sinking of the USS Maine sparked the Spanish-American War and the use of Fort Clinch once again as a barracks and ammunition depot. At this time, fortifications were made to the fort, including the mounting of guns and laying of a minefield outside the walls. But less than a year later, hostility ceased, and again, Fort Clinch was abandoned. After sitting empty for a number of years, the fort was sold by the army to private entities in 1926 as it was no longer thought to be of strategic value. The years of neglect began to tell on the old brick walls as pieces crumbled and sand began to pile inside thanks to Atlantic storms.
Fortunately, a few people recognized the significance of this historic site, and Fort Clinch became one of Florida's first state parks in 1935. The Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC, began restoring the buildings at the fort in 1936 thanks to the New Deal proclamation of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, who put thousands of Americans back to work refurbishing the nation's parks and resources amid the stagnation of the Great Depression. The CCC Company constructed the museum, campground, and park roads, as well as removed massive amounts of sand and debris from the fort itself. A monument to these dedicated servants stands on park grounds today. During World War II, Fort Clinch served its final mission as a joint operations center for surveillance and communications. At the end of the war, it was given back to the state to open to the public. Visitors to the fort today can tour guard rooms, a prison, barracks, hospital, kitchens, and even a blacksmith's shop, all found inside the brickwork walls and furnished as they would have been during the Civil War and Union occupation. The rooms give off a powerful feeling of history and helpful volunteers and rangers share the story of what took place here. In my opinion, the fort is an architectural marvel of its time, and every time we visit, one of my favorite architectural features are the ceilings. Exploring the empty hallways and winding staircases of the fort, visitors can feel like they are on an adventure back in time.
staff and volunteers in period uniforms depict daily life in the fort, including everything from bullet making to sewing. Reenactment events occur year round, including first weekend Confederate and Union garrisons, candlelight tours, and larger scale war reenactments. So they were just talking about how bricks like this, the mortar is really worn down in between because this is like a common grabbing place as people were coming quickly down the stairs. Whereas over here where you wouldn't really be grabbing, the mortar is still thick. Interesting.
Although it was never fully completed or used in direct combat, Fort Clinch served as a military post during three U.S. engagements. It endures as a symbol of our history, as well as the bravery and dedication of the soldiers who stayed there and protected the United States. As we were leaving the fort, we found this gopher turtle trying to cross the road. I got out to stand near him just in case there was any oncoming traffic. I figured they would be able to see me and then they would notice that he was there and that way he would be able to cross the road in peace. I didn't have to intervene at all. He did a great job scurrying his little way across the road and getting himself up and into the woods on the other side. He was really a treat to see as we were leaving. That is going to be it for this trip to Fort Clinch State Park. Thank you so much for coming along with us as we visited a couple of times over the last few days. If you ever have the opportunity to visit Fort Clinch State Park, I highly recommend that you do. We find the park to be very appealing to both adults and children alike. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time here on my channel with me. If you're not already subscribed, please make sure to do so so that you don't miss any future content that I produce. I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.